In this view of the blast, recorded from a camera tower on Bikini, the suction caused by the explosion can be seen pulling the soot from the ship's stacks into the center of the rising column. The towering cloud column rose to a height of almost eight miles. After dropping the atomic bomb, the B-29 Dave's Dream returns to her base at Kwajalein. Not far behind are the aircraft photographic planes with a film record of one of the most amazing and spectacular events in the annals of history. Cameras are removed from the planes and the exposed film forwarded to photographic centers for processing and distribution. Seventeen Air Force drones land at Inuitok. These planes, guided through the center of the cloud column, gathered radioactive dust particles in large filter bags suspended from bomb racks. And these deadly radioactive dust bags are removed and carried to laboratories for testing and analyzing. Navy F-6F drones flown back from Bikini by mother control planes prepare to land at Roy Island. When the drones near the ground, air control is switched to the ground control officer at the edge of the flight strip who lands the pilotless aircraft. Like the Air Force drones, these Navy fighters carried air scoops containing special filter papers for determining the concentration of radioactivity in the cloud column. Crews taking out the dangerously radioactive materials were carefully indoctrinated in the procedure of handling such objects in order to avoid lethal burns from the fission products, deadly gamma and beta rays. Meanwhile, at Bikini, inspection parties make a preliminary appraisal of the damage to the target fleet. Burning from fires started by the low-order detonation of torpedo warheads is the aircraft carrier Independence. The light carrier was heavily damaged. For the blast struck the ship on the port quarter, warped, buckled, and carried away light plating, and pushed up the flight deck so that it looked like a rooftop. The Independence class carriers are built on lightly constructed cruiser type hulls, which accounts in part for the heavy damage. Aircraft carrier Saratoga was undamaged except for a small fire in supply stores. The battleship Nevada, target ship of the array, suffered moderate superstructure damage and the deck aft was buckled. The paint on one side was scorched, but did not burn. The period between Test Abel and Test Baker experiments was an extremely busy one. The immense task of making detailed and comprehensive inspections, recording data, and reorienting the entire target fleet for the underwater test was completed. During this time, Vice Admiral Blandy flew to Ronjerik to see King Judah, ruler of Bikini. 
During the friendly visit, the Admiral presented King Judah with several gifts. At sea, aboard the aircraft carrier Sador, a naval photographic officer briefs the photographic plane pilots and lens experts who will photograph the Baker Day blast. Also taking off from the carrier are control planes that will guide the radio control drone boats. In Bikini Lagoon, radiological reconnaissance boats directed from low-flying aircraft will be used as safety patrol vessels. Immediately after the blast, these drone boats equipped with special instruments to record radioactivity will be guided through the target area to capture samples of water and air. Determining the concentration of deadly radioactive particles is of the utmost importance since invisible gamma and beta rays kill without warning. Aboard the firing ship USS Cumberland Sound, the Los Alamos group of the Manhattan Engineer District enter the timing laboratory where the radio transmitters and specially constructed instruments for detonating the bomb are located. Timing laboratory scientists pass into the master control room. Dr. Marshall Holloway, leader of the Los Alamos group, unlocks and personally throws one of the master transmitter switches. The timing laboratory is a complex interlocking system of radio transmitters, timing recorders, and scientific apparatus. As H hour approaches, generators are started, transmitters warmed up, graph cards on time recorders changed, and everything made ready for the blast. 